Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent and today is Floral Friday. So we're doing some simple, loose, easy stargazer lilies because because of that time of year when people pull out the lilies for Easter. I didn't do any white ones because the white's a little more tricky with watercolor for people who are beginning. And this is a simple, easy beginner watercolor tutorial um, for a stargazer lily. So let's get started. Okay, as always, I'm gonna go over my supplies. I have a piece of 100% uh, Arches cold pressed paper. This is a 10 by 14 sheet that I basically cut in half. Um, I have my various brushes, my my palette with my paints in it. My I have two water jars up here, my paper towel. Um, I mix some rose with the, this rose with some medium yellow in here, more on the pink side than obviously the orange side. It's a medium green with some yellow, light yellow, and then hooker's green with a little bit of indigo there for that color. Um, I mixed a lot of paint. You want to mix a lot of paint um, so you have a lot to work with. If you don't, then you're constantly mixing paint. I will be using my Grumbacker number 10 brush because it's a fairly nice rounded tip um, and it's got a good belly on it. And I lightly sketched out kind of like where I want the flowers to go. You can see pencil lines, just like little sketches. And it, you know, basically for a lily, I grabbed some reference off the internet, just grab these stargazing lilies off the internet. And obviously I'm just looking for the, the shape and it's just like these little star shapes, as you see like this. And some peeking behind, and then you got this little stamens we're painting this loose so as you're looking at the reference of like you're not going to copy every little detail it's going to be a loose kind of situation and you see that how they look and then you can add your own leaves around it <clears throat> that's how you make it your own you take a reference you see how it the flower looks the colors you know this one has more pink all the way to the edge this one has white to the edge it doesn't really matter I mean you get the idea um, so, like I said, I just did um, a drawing of uh, slightly a pencil, of, like the placement I want some of the flowers. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Um, if I have an idea where I want to place them, it's just easier just to go ahead for tutorial and uh, yeah, use my needed eraser to take off all these erase marks. So these are going to be simple strokes, simple loose strokes. I'm going to put some water on my brush and put some water in watercolor this I want it so, so I want it light so I'm getting a water on my brush and then I'm gonna dab it on the paper towel I dab it on the paper towel take off a lot of excess water I don't want a ton of water um, if you don't do that it's gonna be puddling all over your page so we're gonna do some simple like up and down type of strokes see, up and down leaving See if it's not so wet, it can get like a dry brush effect to it, I'm leaving a little white in the middle there. Again, that's how I dab it on a paper towel. So I'm trying to make those little star points, but not so. What's the word? Pointy. <laughs> I guess that's the word. So I'm just going like back and forth leaving a little white in the middle. If I want to put a little more of my color in the middle here, I could do that. Let it bleed out a little bit. Grab some more water on my brush. And dab it. And I'm pushing down, pushing down and pulling it. Just this up and backward. Leaving, I like to leave a little white because I can't go back and do that later. Again, pushing down. Oh, see, that's really that's a dry brush effect, by the way. If you see that up close, which is another cool effect. I'll have to show you in the tutorial. That's how you know it's really dry. So I'm adding more water. You can my. <laughs> I'm pushing it around with the water because it was too dry. I'm grabbing that. I'm gonna grab that, I'm clanking it. So 
So this would be my kind of like my first stargazing lily flower. Place that one down. I'm just going to fill in the middle. Then put one over here, a little half one down here, and then like a little bud one type up over here. So again, I'm getting more water on my brush because I want this color pale, actually. And this is like a side view one I'm going to do now. It's just a simple like stroke, curved, and up over here, over here like that. See how simple that is for a side view one? Because we're making loose lilies, we're not making realistic ones. I mean, that's a whole nother situation. Again, up in here. Oh, that's a little too much water. I mean, not paint on my water brush. Back and forth strokes. This is, I didn't like the way that one came out, so I'm moving that around. A little pointy. This one's gonna kind of curve over on top. Some have like a little dry brush to them, which is kind of nice. I'm still gonna fill in that middle part. And then up over in here, if you want to add a little deeper color in the middle, let it blend out. That's going to be pretty too. We can work with that. Down here. Maybe not like that. And remember, water likes to be a hard edge. See, this one's kind of created a hard edge right here. Zoom in. You don't have to move that around to get rid of it. Same thing with over here. You can just grab your brush and swoop it up. If it's starting to create that hard edge that you don't want. It's a hard edge type paint. You have to manipulate it to make a soft edge. Pay no attention to the barking dog upstairs. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna do like a little bud up here. Again, grab some of your paint. Why I keep putting in the water jar and then going to the paint is I'm trying to make it pale and it soaks up on my belly of the brush, but then I dab it on the paper towel so I take off all the excess water. So I'm just gonna put a little bud here. It was like a bud. It's kind of opening on this one but closed on this one. So I'm doing a combination of the two, I guess. All right, now we're gonna go work on our, see this is still, what about watercolors? That it makes this hard edge. If you don't like this hard edge like this, you're gonna go back in and move it around, manipulate it to get rid of it. So I wasn't fond of that hard edge. Okay, we'll work on the greens. So he just wanted a combination of two simple greens, like a medium green and a dark green. I'm just gonna keep this simple today. I have this light medium green. Put a little more, oops. Too much medium green. Put a yellow on there. And a touch of brown. Just a touch of brown number. Just to take that brightness away. You could do a touch of, of the rose or whatever. Just a touch of it. All right, we're gonna grab this on the brush. We're gonna get a lot of this paint on the brush, on the belly of the brush. See, I'm twisting it around. I'm gonna make simple leaves. I mean, it's a little too bright, so I might not actually grab a little more of that medium and touch of that color. It's not creating the color that I want. Too bright. There we go. I'm just going to put some nice simple leaves. I 
it's just up and down kind of situation. I'm going to grab the dark one, put the stem down here. See, I'm just going like that. Really simple leaves. See, I'm already running out of paint. That's why you need to make a lot of paint. Especially if you're using a big brush like this. It soaks it all out of, it gets it all on the belly of the brush. But you can see we're starting to build this like, um, bunch of lilies. I'm just going to grab some more hooker's green. I could just use the hooker's green itself. It's really dark. If I want it even darker, I'll just add a little indigo. Get some nice darker leaves. I want that one darker. Clean up my brush. I grab some more of this medium green. Again, we're just playing around. We want the leaves. You don't have to follow this exact tutorial. It's much better if you just create your own. But you're getting the idea how I make the leaves. It's that simple. It's this stroke. <laughs> like a skating or skiing, I guess. I don't know. Just adding in the greenery. I'm going to add some darker green. Mixing up more paint. It's more concentrated this way. Get some darker tones up in here. And over here. All right, and then we're going to go back in. Now I feel like this is the pink, so too monotone. So this is when I might go back in, except up here at the bud, I have to fix that. I have to add the green on top of it because really, it wouldn't look like that. There we go. Mixing up the colors. Okay, so I'm feeling like this pink is looking a little too monotone. So I'm going to go back in, and you can do, you can paint upon your watercolor that you created, and just build up on that, just go right on top of that. You see that? And you can push that around. My paint's getting a little muddled because I had green on it. So now we get some more variations and tones of the pinks, which we weren't, which we didn't have before. You want to have some variety, so it has some life to it. So I'm going to go back over here and add some over in here. Just in some of these petals. Not all of them. Now you could have been fine with the way it was and that's fine. But I felt like for me I wanted some more tones going in here. Same thing up in here actually. Just building on the color that I had. So now I'm feeling like I like the tones and the way that looks. What I'm going to do is dry it and come back and we'll finish it off. 
Okay, so I used my hair dryer just to quickly dry this. And we're just gonna make the little stamens now. We're gonna make this medium green. Looks a little yellow in here. I know I'm using the brush that I'm not supposed to be using, but that's okay. It's fairly activated. I'll go take my dirty brush. I tell you to use a dirty brush to mix colors because sometimes if you use your nice brush, you're actually killing the bristles. But I feel like my Grumbacker is strong. It can handle it. So I've got this medium green color. The stamens, I'm just gonna do simple lines. Like so. That's what really makes it a lily anyway. See, like that. And then we're gonna mix a color that's like a pinkish, like some rose, some brown, like burnt umber, maybe a little more rose. So it's like a deep red, reddish brown. I'm just gonna do little dabs of the stamens on top. Now, I just realized I forgot to put the little dots. I'm gonna use that same color, maybe actually a little bit lighter. See, it's Friday and I'm not, I don't have my head together. So we got this color mixed up. We're gonna dab in paper towel and just use the tip of our brush. I'm just gonna put those little dots that make it that special type of lily. Not too many. The stargaze and lily. Just put it around here. Up over in here. I want them coming from the middle outward. And that's how I would do my simple. Simple stargazer. Lily painting. I know, it's very loose, it's very easy. It's, this is a beginner painting. I mean, we're not getting into serious, um, realistic, that would take a while. I'm gonna go back in and fix this. But it looks pretty enough that, you know, you'd wanna stick it on your wall, or make something nice with it, a card, an Easter card or Mother's Day card. See, I'm going back in. You can go back in and go on top of your watercolor. I don't know if you noticed that or know that, but you can do that. It's layering. What you can't do is make it lighter. You can only make it darker. So that's the difference. Watercolor, um, as opposed to acrylic or oil. You can go in there and make it lighter. You can do all those kind of things with that. There you go, Floral Friday. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I am so, what's the word? I'm working hard to try and do the um, acrylic channel videos. It's hard to do both, so please check out my acrylic channel. It's in the, um, on the, on the home page. You click on channels and you'll see the other one. So please check that one out. Those are just fun demos uh, that you could do under like 30 minutes. I'm showing palette knife paintings and band brush paintings, whatever. So anyway, I'm rambling, but um, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks so much for um, this community. I really appreciate you, and I hope you have a great day.